to share with us the revised IRR of the Fire Code of the Philippines for general establishment. We have the Deputy Director for Fire Safety Enforcement Group of the Bureau of Fire Protection, Fire Superintendent Jan Gary D. Lunas. Good morning, everyone. My name is Superintendent Changari de Lunas. I am the Deputy Director of the Fire Safety Enforcement Group of the Bureau of Fire Protection. The topic that is assigned to me now is the revised implementing rules and regulations of the Fire Code of the Philippines or Republic Act 9514. As you all know, the 2009 IRR of the Fire Code was revised last 2019 or 10 years after its implementation. Throughout these past 10 years, several issues have to be resolved by the Bureau of Fire Protection that necessitated the amendment of the IRR. So today, I will be sharing uh, to you some of the most important provision that applies to general establishments. The objectives of our session for today are the following. Number one, for you to be able to enumerate some of the most important general requirements on various establishments. And number two, for you to be able to determine the required fees and fines in the application of the required certificate and clearances from the Bureau of Fire Protection. Before I will go to the most important provisions that apply to general establishments. Let me first emphasize this preliminary information. The first one is on coverage of the Fire Code of the Philippines. The Fire Code applies to all persons, either natural or juridical, and it also applies on all buildings, facilities, or structures in their premises contracted before and after the effectivity of the law. Considering that the law has a retroactive effect, buildings, structures, or facilities constructed before the passing and implementation of this law must still comply. Another very important information that I'd like to share with you is on the authority to enforce and, and administer the Fire Code of the Philippines. You know, under the law, it is the BFP which has the authority to enforce and administer the Fire Code of the Philippines and not any other agencies or entities of the government. And to both said uh, assertion, the newly passed BFP Modernization Law or Republic Act 11589 further enhanced and clarified this mandate. Now, let me now go to the general requirements on buildings and establishments. Let us start from the requirement of a company fire brigade under section 6021. The revised IRR requires that business establishments that uh, can accommodate at least 50 persons shall establish and maintain its own fire brigade to deal with fire and other emergencies within its premises. This is of course in addition to the fire safety requirements in the premises before a fire safety inspection certificate may be issued by the fire marshal having jurisdiction. A certificate of competency is also a requirement for fire volunteers, fire volunteer organizations, and fire safety practitioners before they engage themselves as fire volunteers or as designers, contractors, or those uh, even involved in the upkeep of fire safety systems. Currently, however, the COC for fire safety practitioners is still uh, on hold due to the pending guidelines for its issue ones. We also now have institutionalized the requirement that fire safety evaluation clearance is a prerequisite for the issuance of a building permit by the Office of the Building Official. Therefore, any building permit issued without the required EPSEC 
is null and void. However, this must be consistent with the provisions of the National Building Code, which provides that the fire marshal has to act within five days from the endorsement of the building official. Failure on the part of the fire marshal to act within the period specified, then the building official is now justified to issue a building permit even without the fire safety evaluation clearance. The BAP also again requires the submission of fire safety reports as a condition before a fire safety evaluation clearance or a fire safety inspection certificate may be issued. If you recall, the submission of fire and life safety assessment report or FALAR was uh, removed by then Secretary Robredo of the ILG. But because of the many fire incidents that were proven to be caused by poor maintenance and inadequate compliance of the required fire safety systems or fire safety requirements, the BFP deemed it proper to require again the submission of a well-documented fire safety reports. These are now called fire safety compliance report, which is a requirement for fire safety evaluation clearance fire safety compliance and commissioning report, which is a requirement in the application for fire safety inspection certificate for occupancy and the fire safety maintenance report, which is a requirement for uh, application for business operation, which is annual. Which buildings are now required to submit these reports? All buildings that are required to install wet standpipe system, automatic fire suppression system, and automatic fire detection and alarm system are required to submit these reports, number one, during application for fire safety evaluation clearance, in which is in this case, you have to submit the fire safety compliance report. Then, you are going to submit fire safety compliance and commissioning report in the application for fire safety, eval air safety inspection certificate for occupancy when the building is already finished and will now be applied for occupancy. And lastly, fire safety maintenance report when securing FSIC for business operation. That means you're going to submit this fire safety maintenance report annually to the Bureau of Fire Protection as a requirement for your fire safety inspection certificate. Currently, however, only the submission of the fire safety maintenance report is required due to the pending guidelines for the issuance of COC for fire safety practitioners who are the only authorized signatory of these reports. For the fire safety maintenance report required now, the building administrator or manager may sign the report for the meantime. Again, only fire safety practitioners issued with certificate of competency are allowed to prepare, sign, and certify the fire safety compliance report fire safety compliance and commissioning report, and the fire safety maintenance report. Let us now go to the requirement on fire safety clearances. Uh, aside from the fire safety inspection certificate, which is a requirement for occupancy and for business operation, the fire code also requires that um, fire safety clearances be secured for the storage, handling, and transportation of hazardous materials and hazardous operations and processes. Also, uh, fire safety clearances are required for the installation of fire safety and warning system and building service equipment. However, uh, for those that are included already in the application for fire safety evaluation clearance as a requirement for the building permit, 
you do not have to apply for an independent fire safety clearance. However, for a standalone application, which means these are the applications that are after the building uh, have been issued with a uh, certificate of occupancy, say for example, replacement or uh, maintenance or upgrading, then you have to apply for a separate fire safety clearance, which is called a standalone fire safety clearance. The fire code also now requires the mandatory posting of emergency evacuation plan. In the old implementing rules and regulations, only places of assembly buildings are required to post. Now under section 10 to 513 of the revised implementing rules and regulations, all buildings are now required to post emergency evacuation plans on conspicuous uh, locations within the premises of the building. And the basic information that are enumerated therein are the required information that must be present in your em emergency evacuation plan. Also, there are dimensions required depending on the floor area of your uh, establishment or your building. So enumerated in the slides are the dimensions required based on areas, okay? Now, for fire detection, alarm, and communication systems under section 10266, please be informed that we now recognize the Philippine Electronics Code as additional uh, standard in the design and installation of, your, of our fire alarm system that is in addition to NFP 72, which is the usual reference of the fire code of the Philippines. So currently, we are now recognizing the Philippine Electronics Code as an additional reference in the design. Now on automatic sprinklers, we also have added NFPA 13R. Originally, we only uh, consider NFPA 13 or the standard for the installation of the sprinkler system to be the sole or the sole standard for the installation of the sprinkler system. But currently, we now recognize NFPA 13R for low-rise residential occupancies. That means you may use NFPA 13R for buildings that are four stories and below. Now for a uh, stand pipe system, we uh, recognize NFA 14 as the standard for the installation of stand pipe system. And as an, addition, as an additional information, we now only require wet stand pipe system. We have removed the requirement for a dry pipe system in the Philippines. Now another very important requirement is the institutionalization of the requirement for a smoke control system on high-rise buildings, uh, smoke refuge areas, atrium of covered malls, underground structures and windowless facilities, uh, all means of egress that are smoke protected, all mobile houses, and all other buildings with an area of at least 1,115 square meters. Now the design, installation, operation, or testing of this smoke control system should be in accordance with the Philippine Mechanical Code or the PME Code, NAPA 92 or the standard for smoke control system, NAPA 204, the standard for smoke and heat venting. Um, also, uh, I'd like to emphasize for healthcare occupancies or hospitals, uh, we now allow that the emergency rooms, uh, operating rooms, intensive care units, uh, delivery rooms and other similar facilities may now be located up to fifth floor. Uh, originally in the uh, old IRR, we limit the location of these uh, facilities in the ground floor. However, uh, because of several requests and appeal from the stakeholders, we now allow it up to the fifth floor. However, if uh, you're going to locate it on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, or fifth floor, you have to provide a ramp for, uh, our, for the use for emergency purposes. No? So again, the general rule is still 
uh, it should be in the ground floor. However, if uh, for any reason you cannot uh, use the ground floor as the location of these facilities, you may locate, locate it up to the fifth floor or up to the uh, first level basement, provided that you provide a ramp or a horizontal exit. In this, and this ramp or horizontal exit must be fully enclosed in a two hour fire rating enclosure. Uh, for hot works operations, like welding, cutting, and other hot works operations, please be reminded of the hot works clearance requirement under section 10 4, 17, 1. Uh, if you recall, this is one of the issues that we raised during the uh, Kentex fire incident for failure of the um, establishment of the operator or the operator to secure the hot works clearance prior to the welding operation, which caused the fire in that facility, in that uh, uh, factory. Uh, so for business establishment requiring almost daily repair or maintenance operation due to its nature or business or operations, you may secure your hot works clearance annually. And also for construction with uh, project duration exceeding one year, the validity of your hot works clearance is annual. Now for constructions or renovations that are less than uh, one year, then it should be on a per project duration basis. Let us now go to part four of my lecture, which is the fees, charges, and fines. Uh, let us first talk about the fire safety inspection fee. This is the fee that you pay to the uh, Bureau of Fire Protection when you are uh, securing the fire safety inspection certificate, either for the certificate of occupancy or for business permit. So originally, this is 10% of all fees charged by the local government unit or PESA, or any other government agencies that require our fire safety inspection certificate. Because of this amendment, we have raised it to 15%. So from 10% to 15% of all fees charged. So there is an increase of 5%. For uh, storage clearance fee, this is for the storage of flammable and combustible materials. Uh, this is uh, issued uh, when you store uh, flammable and combustible materials or liquid in your premises and this is based on the storage capacities and I, an example would be uh, for calcium carbide where you have the storage capacity and the annual fees uh, on the right portion of the table and also uh, we also require the uh, securing of the installation clearance and for that you will pay the installation clearance fee this is for the installation of gas, flammable and combustible liquid systems, installation of equipment, utilities and facilities, and installation of fire protection and warning systems. So as you can see in the table, uh, there are equivalent uh, rates based on the kind of the installation clearance that you're going to apply. So for gases, uh, this is 280 pesos for those that are exceeding 454 liters capacity. And for flammable and combustible liquids in above ground and underground tanks, it is 1,049. Now for equipment, utilities, and facilities, this is 0.10% of the verified estimated value of equipment or utility to be installed, okay? Now for conveyance clearance, uh, this is for the issuance of clearance to vehicles transporting any explosives, flammable liquids, and combustible materials over streets, water, or through pipelines, or even to load and unload such explosives, flammable liquids, or combustible materials in or from any vessel, boat, craft, or railway. So an example would be for cargo truck, motor vehicle, tank truck, uh, tank trailer and tank semi trailer uh, carrying flammable or combustible liquids for the first 2000 liters you have to pay uh, 1748 now for every additional 400 liters or fractions thereof you have to pay an additional 70 pesos and for other kinds of flammable or combustible materials uh, there are other um, um, 
uh, table in, in the file code where you can consult to determine the rate. Now for other fees, um, there are other activities or other, or, or even the securing of documents as well as uh, other, uh, other functions or activities that BAP that, that you usually pay. You know, example, in the uh, conduct of fire drill, you have to pay 1,000 pesos. Uh, if you're going to appeal from the decision of the local pharmacy to higher authorities, you have to pay an appeal fee. So these are the example of uh, other fees. You know? uh, and then for administrative fines, uh, these, are, these are the penalties that you incur for uh, failure to secure, say, for example, the required clearances, an example of which is your failure under literacy is your failure to secure a fire safety evaluation clearance prior to the construction of the building, which is penalized by 37,500 on the first offense and uh, 50,000 pesos on the second offense. And on the third offense, you will be closed. Okay? And then another very important is on number nine, this is failure to comply within the period specified in the affidavit of undertaking because you usually promise to comply within an extended period and you execute an affidavit of undertaking uh, but sometimes you fail to comply with the promised date and so you will be penalized by 37,500 to 50,000 pesos depending on how many times you fail to comply with your promise to uh, comply with the fire safety requirements. That ends my uh, lecture for uh, today. Good afternoon, uh, good morning, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Fire Superintendent Lunas.